How's that? Ooh, 38. Mountain biking is excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Trek in the past have been the sensible khaki pants of the bike industry. Not too fancy, not too casual, just about right for any occasion. But in recent years, they seem to have lost their inhibitions in all the right ways. At some point, they got rad, quit their job, abandoned the freeway, and they're now off bushwhacking straight to Burning Man, doing their own thing. The Slash seems to be a continuation of this newfound irreverence. Dare we even say, confidence. But Trek is a big brand with big considerations, so what are the cornerstones of the new Slash? With this brand new bike, Trek is moving away from the more traditional layouts of the past models to a new high pivot idler equipped bike. Yeah, so Trek has brought some other features that we've seen on their previous models. Uh, so they've got a progression chip at the lower shock mount and in frame down tube storage as well. Trek is continuing the use of their ABP suspension platform with this new high pivot layout, meaning the bike should be composed and active even under heavy braking. So it's a sensible high pivot bike that wants it all. This geometry numbers are a good blend of progressive and sensible. A 77 degree seat angle, high stack numbers, reach numbers that are very in the range of normal. Andy squat hovers around 100% throughout the entire gear range, making for a composed and neutral climbing bike. The Trek Slash is a really even keeled feeling climbing platform. The Andy squat hovers around 100%, so you're gonna have a nice neutral feel with good bump eating performance, but enough pedaling support as well. But there are some complications, of course, with those high pivot idler bikes. It's a little bit noisy. You can feel a little bit of that drag. The geometry of the slash between a nice neutral position balanced between the front and rear wheel, it's fairly upright. And the fact that they have a medium large size means this bike is gonna fit a wide range of people. All hail the medium large for, you know, medium large humans. That said, it's interesting to see that Trek went with t-shirt sizing and didn't go with sizes say one through six and let riders work it out for themselves. We love the adjustable head angle with one degree cups available aftermarket. This bike can also go to a full 29er, even if mixed wheels come stock. But is this bike maybe a bit too exciting for Trek? So the suspension on the Slash is extremely well executed. The high pivot design absorbs bumps of all size, but still gives good support and maneuverability. For a bike that well executed, it would be nice if it were a bit quieter. The high pivot layout, you have a lot of drag on the chain and quite a bit of chain slap. So there are some noises that are gonna come when it descends. When we look at the geometry on the Slash, it's very well balanced front to rear, and there is a good range of sizes that fits everybody. And the fact that Trek integrated adjustment into these bikes means you can change the wheel size, the head angle, as well as the shock progression, though all of those adjustments do incur some aftermarket costs because you need to buy a lot of those parts from Trek in order to make the change. Thanks to the full carbon frame of the Slash, you can really carve into turns on this. Yeah, I think the frame is quite stiff. Uh, additionally though, a lot of the components on the Slash are as well. So you've got pretty rigid wheels, the bar stem combo can feel a little chattery sometimes, but for me, I really like that combination of factors. The only downside to it is because you can push into corners so hard, I had the chain hop that lower idler a couple times. The Rad Data Bike certainly delivers on both the ups and the downs. The stiffness and balance of the Trek really impressed us. It's a very well-rounded bike, at least for one in this category. What else was there that caught our eye? The Trek Slash comes with a whole host of very well thought out features. The first of which is the in-frame storage. I think Trek did a really good job with this. It's one of the more secure we've seen on the market. And additionally, you can fit a full-sized bottle into the frame, regardless of size. So the size small can take a full-size water bottle, but it does have a 27.5 front wheel. That's a little odd and maybe might be a downside for some of the enduro racers that would fit that size small frame, would you agree? Yeah, that's true. I think the lack of a 29er option for the small size is kind of an oversight here, but to their benefit, Trek did think about the dropper post sizing on these bikes. On a size medium, you can slam a 200 mil post, which is gonna be great news for pretty much any sized rider out there. This bike seems to be a pragmatic proposition that covers off most of the bases very well, even if for all Trek's trickery, they couldn't quite stop it from having more clangs and bangs than a 1970s sci-fi movie. But who is the bike for? Okay, so this bike is gonna be for anybody who wants to race enduro or ride any kind of gnarly terrain. The Slash really is a super capable bike, except it might not be the choice for someone who tends to avoid drivetrain maintenance. Similarly, it's kind of noisy, so people who want super quiet bikes might not love it. And lastly, 
It's not the fastest climber out there, but it does handle technical terrain very well. All right, that's enough with the dad jokes. Let's get into the pros and cons. So the pros of the Trek Slash, we've got excellent suspension feel, really dialed geometry, plus a whole host of frame features and aftermarket adjustments. As for the cons, it's a little on the heavier side. The drivetrain is definitely complex, and we did notice a little bit more rattles throughout the frame. Trek really have done an exceptional job with the Slash. Its geometry and suspension performance are commendable, although it doesn't quite feel like it's 100% dialed when it comes to the noise level and lower chain guide execution. That said, Dario is confident that with 20 minutes, some aftermarket silencing tape, and a strong cup of tea, he could get this bike to a much better place, even if it is a little disappointing to not have this covered from the start in a bike at this level. For $9,400, they can at least include the tea bags. If you can get over the noise, going both up and down, this is a genuinely impressive and multifaceted bike with shock performance that at times left us awestruck.